Recently, we discussed a young 39-year-old female patient with dyspnea and she was feeling unwell. She had a viral infection some months ago. And if you take a look at the apical views in the apical 2 and in the apical 4 chamber view, the 2 chamber view is on the left side in the screen, the 4 chamber view is on the right side in the screen, we do see a severely reduced left ventricular function. The ejection fraction is in the range of 25 to maybe 30%. And if we do use an auto ejection fraction calculation, we do see that the machine calculates the ejection fraction in the apical two chamber view with 24%, in the apical four chamber view 33%, and overall we get a biplane ejection fraction of 26%. In your report as a tip, you always should write down a range. So in this case, with the range of 25 to 30% or probably 25%, we are absolutely accurate in describing the severely reduced left ventricular ejection fraction. So we have a case of a half ref. In case of strain imaging, we do see that also in LV strain, the global strain in the four chamber view is severely reduced. Now the four chamber view is on the left side, we do see a global strain. So the GS written in the loop is minus 8.1%. Do remember that the normal value is in the range of minus 18 to minus 20. If we take a look at the curves, we do see that there is some contraction present only in one segment, in this case the red segment, there is even this kinesia present. In the strain M mode, on the down right of the first loop, we do see a lot of light red color, a little bit of darker red color and a very small area of really dark red color. And we do see even blue color. The blue color is this kinesia, the light red color is severe hypokinesia. The darker the red becomes, the more contraction is actually happening. In the two-chamber view, we see a global strain of minus 3.8%, which is also a severely reduced strain. We do see the light red color in the strain M mode, and we do not see even a tiny little bit of darker red color. To continue with the apical long axis view, we have the same image, basically. The global strain of the apical long axis view is minus 7.2%, so severely reduced left ventricular strain imaging. And in the color M mode, we do see some areas which are a little bit darker red. How can we summarize all these findings? We can take a look at the global longitudinal strain of the left ventricle in this 17 segment model. And we do see that the global longitudinal strain in this case of all the views, the two chamber view, the four chamber view and the apical long axis view is minus 6.4%. So overall, a severely reduced left ventricular strain. If you take a closer look at the bullseye display, we do see in the lateral side or the lateral wall, a blue area, bluish area, some areas or some parts are even darker blue. This is this kinesia. The lighter red colors is severe hypokinesia. And if we go more towards the apical segments, the red color becomes a bit darker. The highest value we see in this bullseye display is minus 15, which would be a borderline left ventricular strain imaging or mildly reduced left ventricular strain. So the typical cherry on top, as we would see it in amyloidosis, is not really present, but we do get the appreciation that the apical segments might contract a little bit more. To move on to the right ventricular strain, I did show you this in the first part of the case of this patient, that you can even use left ventricular strain software to evaluate the right ventricle. In this case, I used an apical long axis software to grade the strain imaging of the right ventricle and the overall free wall strain. So the mean value of the three segments of the free wall of the right ventricle was minus 13. We do see also in the B-mode image that right ventricular function is definitely reduced and the right ventricle is dilated. But is this actually accurate? If you perform now a right ventricular strain imaging with a designated RV strain software, we do see that the free wall strain is minus 14.1. Minus 14.1 is approximately the same value as we calculated with the LV software. 
What is the upside or why should we use the designated RV strain software? Well, it's simply easier and it's not as time consuming as use a left ventricular software for evaluating the right ventricle. We do even get more values here. We do see that the TAPSI is 18 millimeters and we also get the value for the global strain. The global strain is severely reduced with minus 8.7%. The TAPSI is practically normal. So the cutoff value of the TAPSI is 17 millimeters. And if we look at the basal segment, also the strain of the right ventricle of the basal segment is preserved. So a normal strain value and a normal TAPSI, but the overall strain of the free wall is definitely reduced. To continue with strain imaging, we also can take a look at the strain imaging of the left atrium. Before we do that, of course, we have to understand that there are three functions or three phases of the left atrium. The first one is the reservoir function, followed by the conduit function and the pump function. You do see on the bottom of the image that there is the cardiac cycle also displayed. The AVO is the aortic valve opening, the AVC is the aortic valve closure, followed by the mitral valve opening and the mitral valve closure. There are also measurements we can take and there are two measurements I want to point out. It's the so-called pulse and PAX. The pulse is the peak atrial longitudinal strain and the norm value is in the range of 39%. Be aware that this is a positive value. And the PAX, the normal value is 17%. So if you know these two measurements, you will get a lot of information out of the left atrial strain and also remember the curve for the following images. In the second part of this case, we will continue with left atrial strain imaging in this patient and we will also continue how the patient is doing after optimal therapy. We will continue now with left atrial strain. Let's review that there are several functions you need to understand in left atrial strain, the reservoir, the conduit and the pump function. And I want to point out again the measurements, the pulse and the PAX. Pay special attention on the pulse, the peak atrial longitudinal strain with a normal value around 39%. If you go on to our patient, we do see on the left side that left atrial strain is severely reduced. If you take a look at the curve and compare it to the right side, it looks entirely different. The pulse value is only 9%. You also can appreciate that left atrium volume is increased. On the right side, we have a normal example. And in this normal example, you also see the normal left and right ventricular function, but also the normal left atrial function. The pulse with approximately 40% is absolutely normal. And also the shape of the curve is more looking like what we have seen in the previous slide. So to summarize, this is a case of dilated cardiomyopathy. The patient had myocarditis and this is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, so half-ref post-myocarditis. The coronaries were without any pathological findings in this patient. And because this patient was highly symptomatic and decompensating frequently, she was listed high urgently for heart transplant. Well, what can we do after heart transplant with strain imaging? Here's an example of this patient post-transplant. We do see on the left-hand side a B-mode image and we can appreciate that left ventricular function is definitely normal. I would grade ejection fraction in the range of 55 to maybe 60%. And if we take a look at strain imaging, we do see that strain imaging compared to before heart transplant is definitely better. It's increased. The global strain is minus 15.6. So the first impression we get from the transplanted heart is that the heart is doing quite okay. If we do look at the strain M mode, we do see darker red colors during peak contraction, which also points towards a normalized function. In the apical long axis view, we do see that the global strain is minus 21.8%. We see the nice curves, which show us optimal contraction of basically all the segments and in the strain mode imaging, we do see that there are many dark red colors, so normal strain. On the right-hand side, there is the three-chamber view of this patient. We can also appreciate 
that there are no visual accessible wall motion abnormalities, which was proven by strain imaging. In the two chamber view, we have a global strain of minus 19.8, which also is a normal strain. In the B-mode image, again, we do see a normal contracting heart. What about the right ventricular strain at the right ventricle? It's very important to also assess the right ventricle in transplanted patients. It gives you a lot of valuable information on how the patient might be doing and the prognosis overall. In this specific case, we do see that the free wall strain with minus 23.8 is absolutely normal. To continue with the bullseye display, we see that there is overall a normal global longitudinal strain. Remember, we said that the normal value has to be around minus 18, so minus 18, minus 19, minus 20. In this case, it's minus 19.1%, which shows that this is a normal global longitudinal strain of the left ventricle. If you take a look now at the bullseye display, there is a somewhat a basal reduction in strain imaging in the basal segments. Overall, this is a important marker for the follow-up. In this case, I would rely on the overall global longitudinal strain of this patient with minus 19, which is, as I pointed out, normal. How is the patient doing now? Well, she's perfectly fine. She has no more dyspnea, did not decompensate, has no problem with her new heart and feels absolutely fine and is already back to work.